morning, everyone. How are you? Everyone good? Yes. Awesome. Um, it is so nice to have our first in-person meeting. Um, for those of you that are in here, I am Asma Farouk. I'm the LCC Executive Director this year. Um, before we begin, um, I wanted to quickly um, introduce Anna Bellatian. Um, she plays. Anna, if you could introduce yourself a little and tell us about the game that you play for quickly. Uh, yeah, so my name is Anna Bellatian. I'm a senior and um, I play with the team. Um, but the team that I played was Fantasy by British View. And it's a more contemporary romantic concerto that I've been listening for a while. Um, but yeah, it's great. Awesome. Thank you so much. So we have a lot of exciting updates and news for you and a lot of upcoming events we are going to talk about today. Um, and so first up, we have our awesome middle school chair, Tan Henry, who is here to introduce our new head of middle school. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me with the mask? Oh, well, I have the, I'm, I'm Pam Henry. I am the middle school coordinator. Um, and I have the pleasure of introducing one of our newest family members to our family. Um, the person that I'm introducing is new to middle school. And so that just fits in perfectly what I do. So um, David is a veteran administrator who has worked with five independent schools. Most recently, he spent 16 years at the Webb School in Marksville. He also has 19 years um, as leading middle school itself. David and his wife Kelly have started. I introduce to you all Mr. David Nelson, our head of middle school. <laughs> I want to start off by introducing my colleague, most of you know, Robin Preston, Dr. Preston. <laughs> Dr. Preston is the assistant head of the middle school and has been great in uh, helping me with my transition. Uh, we thought we had a little fun this morning. So I want everybody in the room to think back to an embarrassing moment. Some of us are older, it'll take us a while to get back to those years. <laughs> they didn't really tell us what to talk about this morning, correct? So we thought we'd just go around and let each one of you talk about the most embarrassing moment. What about this? Real question. If you could go back to any year in school, first through 12th grade, how many of you would choose to go back to middle school? <laughs> not a single hand. Okay. It's typically not thought of very fondly, right? Part of it, and, I, and I've said this to some of you uh, previously this fall, some of us are just too old and can't remember back to middle school. And for some of us, the emotional scars are so deep, we don't want to go back there, right? Right? It's a hard age group. It's a unique age group. And we want to talk a little bit this morning uh, about how we think strategically in educating and developing kids in grades five through eight. So some of it we think about personnel, the people part of the equation. Some of it we think about the program piece. So let, let me speak to each one of them, and then I'm going to have Robin come up here in a second. Uh, schools are people businesses. It's all about people, it's all about relationships. If uh, about relationships, if any of you had thought fondly back to middle school or maybe even high school, you probably wouldn't think about a specific class or an assignment. It was more about the people you are surrounded by, meaning your peers, or a relationship that you had with an adult in the school. Okay, that's what I remember about my school experience. 
Yeah, mid 50s, pretty hard for me to remember back in middle school days, but I do remember middle school and high school relationships I had with teachers or coaches growing up. So people part, very important. Program part, really important as well. Okay. Strategically. Okay. It should be different than lower school and it should be different than high school. Okay. It should stand alone but be void or balanced by the lower school and the upper school. So typically in education speak, we talk about something called developmentally responsive curriculum. Okay. If kids that are 10 to 15 year old have unique mental needs, then we need a unique program that matches and meets those needs on a daily basis. So I think we have a slide yeah, here behind me and I'll read through it because I know that the uh, text is small. But this comes from research done by the Center of Early, uh, of Early Adolescence. They looked at and came up with seven developmental needs that middle school kids have on a daily basis. Those are listed on the left hand column here. So positive social interaction with adults and peers. A need for limits. A need for physical activity. A need for creative expression. A need for competence and achievement, a need for meaningful participation in family, schools, and communities, and finally, the need for opportunities for self definition. The right hand column is actually the result of an activity we did with the middle school faculty a couple of weeks ago, where we sat and talked about how do we meet these needs within the law and middle school, again, on a daily basis. And so if you look at the first one, it says positive social interaction with adults and peers. There's a lot of different ways we can do that. We can meet that need through advisory programs, through our house system, through a weekly assembly, age appropriate social activities, things like class trips, athletics, and so on. So each one of these needs down the left hand column has a list on the right side. Um, structure and clear limits. Let me just give you an example here. So developmentally, as kids go through lower school, they're pretty compliant. As they get to middle school, they want to push the limit. How many of you can remember back to one of the first times you got in trouble? Had trouble. Typically, that happens middle school or high school years when we're starting to push the limits a little bit. So we need, as young people, or we needed when we were young, somebody to tell us what are the boundaries. Thing that young kids struggle with is attaching consequences to poor decisions. Okay. I used to do an activity with an eighth grade class where I gave them a list of uh, kind of misdemeanors, things that kids had done wrong in school, and let them be the principal or the assistant principal and assign a consequence to it. Theirs didn't even come close to what we thought was appropriate. You know, theirs was a slight slap on the hand. You may see this as parents, right? No. Yes, I did something really wrong. Let me just say I'm sorry and move on, right? Okay, so having an understanding and, and, and limits is really important to young kids. Physical activity, they're at an incredible period of growth. They need to be able to get out and run, okay? Stretch their body. Even though the kids are not very athletic or don't have an interest in athletics uh, at this time period of their lives, need an opportunity to. So again, I think you can get the, 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 the sense of how we think strategically about middle school. I don't know that there has to be overlap and repetition answers for these needs. It can't be a one hit wonder. It can't be that and we have one activity in advisory that talks about structure and clear limits or school rules or classroom rules. It has to be something that kids are reminded of over and over. So there are several programs that are either new or relatively new to the middle school. Uh, I'm going to invite Robin up here now uh, to talk about one of them. One of the more fun and exciting ones has been the clubs program. And it was really the brainchild of Robin. So I'll let her talk for a minute about how clubs can meet some of these needs. Hello, everybody. Clubs do meet a lot of these needs. Now, when you think back to your middle school, I know I have to think back 65 years ago. <laughs> it's just a little bit less for rainy well actually a lot but so club that is the really the big thing that has been most exciting with the kids and with everybody all of them really we have over 25 clubs that we're offering the kids 
Yeah, they may not always get their first choice or their second choice or something like that, but we're trying to give them exposure. Exposure to new things, to new people, to new ideas. Maybe they never thought about, you know, the cooking club, and then now they are into it and they love it and they have found a new passion. Or maybe they take the cooking club and they're like, I do not like it. I know that I don't want to have this in my future. I'm ready to bounce. Next time I want to do the book club or whatever. So it has really been an enriching thing for the kids and the teachers because we have already fostered a ending club. The kids are making relationships with each other and then also with adults. So they're so excited because they have Mr. Spain in whatever club, and then they're like, oh, I can't wait to get to eighth grade to have Mr. Shane because he was so awesome. So it's also great because when they're on campus, they may have someone in their club that they could be in their fifth grader, and then they're like, hey, to an eighth grader, and they think that they are awesome. So <laughs> it has been a really good thing. The relationship building that we do in the middle school is so vital and important to their growth. They do make mistakes like Mr. Malcolm said, and we try to do a good job of giving them the boundaries and then also making it a teachable moment. It's important for them to realize that, hey, this is a mistake, but I'm going to move on for it and learn. That's what we're here to do in middle school is to teach how you learn. Learn how you learn best. So the uh, clubs have been a great addition to the middle school. So I hope your children go home and tell you how much of it is to be middle schooler. Parents? What clubs are you talking about? Oh, yeah. We like to make them for the game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're building all kinds of cool stuff in there. So I know your son is in my club. MLB. <laughs> then we're going to make him like a broadcast from the middle school to show complication, like interview people and you know all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be flipping the script in January and having the kids sign up for a new club, so they have a new experience. Okay. Anybody have questions? All right. Yes. I'm so sorry. Uh, how many semesters per semester can they do one? One per semester. One semester. Yeah, and there's 25 of them. Okay. And what we do is we have a flex period, which is normally used for like a study hall or to get help from other teachers, make up tests, all that kind of stuff. But every, about every third one, we do club day. And that's when the kids go to the club. So is the student chooses? Or is they do yeah. choose the club, I give them the top five. Okay. But you know, but I do mathematically, that's impossible to give them their first or second choice. But I try to, you know, at least do the best I can. Sure. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a web of where they can go. So anybody else? The, uh, the cool part about this particular um, way that we've scheduled this is it's during the school day. There are a lot of middle schools that have club programs that meet after the school day. The problem in schools like Lausanne is our kids are typically over enrolled. It's a cool time to get kids. There are so many new opportunities for kids. So you're typically picking them up and they're on the go from you know 3 30 to 7 o'clock, whatever it is. And so finding a way to do it in the school day is neat. We also have some that activities that meet after school, uh, the school play, which there are almost uh, 75 kids that are involved in the fall play in middle school right now, robotics and some other things that meet after school. But we want to find a way to do it during the school day. And it really fits our philosophy of middle school, the middle school experience, which should have a broad and deep programmatic and that kids can try a bunch of different things when they're finding out about themselves, it's just opportunities for self-definition. And you know, we say to kids all the time, it's okay to try something and figure out you don't like it. You don't want to be Mr. Nelson's age and wish you had picked up the guitar or wish you had learned about pottery, you know, playmaking, something like that. So try soccer. And 
If soccer doesn't work for you, at least you know. Move on to something else. In the same way with the club program. So it's part enrichment, part exploratory. So Robin, help me out a little bit. Uh, enrichment, those activities that are somewhat closely related to courses we offer in the class uh, or in the classroom. Reading club, the writing club, math count. math count, environmental science, engineering, things like that. On the exploratory side, something that we typically don't offer, but kids may be curious in, or we're going to expose them to. Fun things like ping pong, magic, <laughs> yoga, uh, cooking, cooking. You know, things like that. So again, it, 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 it's uh, not a huge risk to try something like this because it's probably eight or 10 meetings during the fall. You get a sense of whether you like it or not. One may be signed up again in the spring or sign up the next year, or again, mark it off your list. Hey, not my, not my uh, uh, strongest interest. I'll move on to something else. So again, it fits that idea of a go through middle school, whether it's a likeness program, a clubs program, an athletics program, being able to try a bunch of different things to figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are, kind of what your likes and dislikes are. So finish up with one thing. I often like to, when I visit with parents, leave you with one parenting tip. So this one kind of has a part one and a part two to it. Uh, those of you that are parents of middle school and high school students right now, okay, they are surrounded, they're growing up in the world and they're surrounded by devices. So I went to a conference a, a, a few years ago, what they talked about was how the brain works best in one, in memory, and two, how it impacts quality of sleep. So think about this one as you leave today. First, on memory. If you are studying something at night and you have to retain it, it should not be studied in the last hour before you go to bed. Okay? Your brain typically goes to sleep an hour before your body does. Okay? Probably not as important uh, or resonate as strongly with middle school kids. But definitely high school kids, their biological clock changes. It typically gets 9 30 or 10. My wife and I experienced this with our two now college age daughters. Okay. They'll say, Dad, I'm going to stay up late and I'm study. We'd always say, in the last hour before you go to sleep, you're better off to go to bed and get up in the morning. We have college age kids to talk to them about that. Okay. So the brain goes to sleep an hour before. Okay. In regards to quality sleep, okay, not just the number of hours, but the number of hours of quality sleep that you get. Think about this one with your kids. They shouldn't watch anything on their devices the last hour before they go to bed. TikTok is huge right now, right? My younger daughter, who's 19, loves TikTok. Let's just sit and watch it. Okay. Great. No, the afternoon, not great late at night. Videos get your mind to racing. You don't want your mind, your brain racing when you're trying to go to sleep. Okay? That one is easy in theory as a parent. Much tougher to put into action. Why? Because a lot of kids use their phone as their alarm clock, so they don't want you to take their phone out of their room. Okay? They also don't want you going in to check on them late at night, right? That's the reality. If you're, if you're worried about quality sleep, whether it's every night or just the night before a big test or a big sports event, okay, think about how you can help them with quality sleep. And a big part of that is removing the device, especially videos. Okay. Mr. Nelson, I read uh, some research yesterday that pre COVID, our kids' screen time on average was like 3.8 hours. And now our kids are up to 8.6 hours per day of screen time. And it's now part of their like everyday, you know, how they function. So just being aware of that the time and the amount of screen time is difficult, but we should just be able to that every day, all day. And now we need to shift back, I guess, a little bit more with mental health. So good, two good parenting tips that I learned at a conference I put into play as a parent of two daughters. One, anything that you need to retain, you don't want to do the last hour before you go to bed. You want to read for pleasure, no problem. 
President Knight's reasonable pleasure discussion needs to uh, retain, do it earlier in the evening or during the day. Second one, quality sleep, put the devices away that last hour before we go to bed. Uh, questions? Anybody? All right, thanks for having us. Thank you so much, Robin and David, for giving us all the middle school updates. I know those of us that have lower school students or even upper school students, it's nice to see, you know, what an awesome team we have um, for middle school and all the excitement that goes along with it. Um, I had a miserable time in middle school when I was living in Chicago. I literally had eyebrows like three inches. I look like Ernie from Sesame Street. I do not. And um, I, it was, I would like to forget about it. But my three kids who are ninth, 11th, and now second year in college had the best experience in middle school. So I'm so happy to see this team and all this awesome um, information for all of you guys. So thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so next up, we have some fall carnival updates, which I hope you all came to. It was awesome. And I have Wadi um, speaking for. Um, Hi everyone, I'm Swati Shopping Campus Care. Um, hope you guys are all able to make it to Fall Carnival. Show of hands, who did? Who did? Who did? Who did? Awesome, you guys all had a blast. So it, we think it was overall a great success. Here's some numbers to show you kind of what we um, were able to accomplish. So we had uh, sold about 950 wristbands. Amazing. Um, we had about 24 booths. And then the total that we were able to raise, still in counting, but let's just say it blows the other years out of the water. Um, and then just remember that all the proceeds that we raise go directly to Link Service. So I think that's so fantastic that our community came together to be able to do this and accomplish this. And I, I'm just so excited for future years to come. Um, all that being said, well, we thought it was such a great event. Overall, we know that there's a lot to work on, and we are, we've already done a list of things that we can improve for next year. If you guys have any feedback whatsoever, please, please tell us. We're open to all of the things. This was a lot of our first time kind of um, doing it this way and being given in general my first time. Um, and so any feedback is absolutely welcome. And then obviously this event would not have been possible without the help of so many people. Um, so all the great reps, huge, huge shout out to all of you. You guys get, got the boots ready yourselves. You guys recruited volunteers, which I know is a little bit hard, uh, but you guys did so much, uh, put so much effort forth in this. Um, thank you to our um, board members that helped coordinate all of that with the reps as well. And then um, special thank you to our carnival committee as well. Um, so again, fall carnival and then the fall party, all of this could not have been a success without your help. So thank you again for all, all your attention. Okay. <laughs> so thank you, um, for that. But quickly, I wanted to, um, she said thank you to all our reps. We could not do any of this without our reps. You guys coordinate everything, you get all the parents to donate, you get everything together, you do the booth, you decorate. I mean, like, thank you so much. Um, special thank you to the, our committee, Kira, Flossie, Berlin, Eric, Andrew, and Amber. Um, from all these people, I think only you two are here. So I have a little something to thank you both for our appreciation um, to both of you.
Um, so thank you guys for that. And then upcoming, we have um, winter holiday decorations. Um, and so if we, this is a big undertaking. Again, this will be my first time being, being involved with it, but I'm so excited to uh, help with it. Um, but we're going to organize all the big four mm -hmm. on Saturday to try to group it into different locations. That way, when we actually decorate on November 19th, it'll all be hopefully fast and seamless and easy. Um, so if you guys are able to help out with either of the signs, we love your help. I have a couple of sign-up sheets over there um, broken up by the different days. If you can help with both days, and then I'll be reaching out to you closer to date um, to let you know a little bit more detail. Yes, ma'am. So we say for organizing, do you mean like actually just organizing the different areas of the store or organizing getting people to volunteer? So uh, organizing the actual decor. So we'll pull it all out of the basement and then we'll try to put it into sections like this is what's going to go on the upper school, this is what's going to go on the lower school, and this is what's going to work. Yeah. And we'll have, we'll let you guys know exactly where and what space we'll be doing that in. <laughs> I was just going to say too, for the organizing, the other thing is the homework we need to get to. I know we definitely need to make sure for the outside and stuff like that. So it's kind of a come all of my shopping list um, and organize the holidays. <laughs> There's a lot down there. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, and then in terms of holidays in general, so we're Given that we are all in and we are trying to be as inclusive as, as possible, um, we did fall decorations, we did the Avila Cardos, which we're hoping to do more with next year. Um, we did the Bali, we talked about the winter holidays, and then so far, these are what I have down. I have Asian New Year Festival, um, end of Jan, early Feb, and then in May, I have Eid. If there's anything that you guys would like to see represented, something that we can do, please tell me. I'm definitely not a cross cultural expert, so I welcome. Um, all uh, input, and so please let me know if there's something that seems like it's missing, uh, and we'll be happy to see what we can do for it. We have a couple of other ideas that are playing in the works that we're really excited about. If we can get it off the ground, I've been thinking about them just so we can make them happen. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's all. Oh, reminder: box positive, box fun. Please do it if you need help. Don't see me. Fuzzy just does something. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Um, next up, we have Elizabeth O'Malley, who is our Arts Link Chair, for an amazing, awesome presentation she put together for us for you to kind of get an inside look at all things Arts Link. So, enjoy. Thank you. Oh, hi. I hope this is going to be fun to watch and inspiring like it was to um, have anything to do with. Hang on. Uh, oh, yeah, because there was a sense down there that wasn't part of it. Yeah, so we're just going to erase that from your mind. That wasn't there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm Elizabeth, and I was asked to present a little bit about art links and what's going on in the arts of our dance. So I wanted to tell you what you already know, which is the learning at Long Dance is driven by creativity and inspiration. Let's just go back a little bit. And then I'll probably say something like with the balance. And that will help me to keep on the same frequency. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know. It's just very old school. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, and I say that because. We know that the arts are driven by inspiration and creativity, but you walk onto this campus and you feel it, it's in the air. It's not just in the arts, it's in everything they do, which is just so exciting and special. And that's something I want to bring focus to. A lot of times we're busy, we're getting our kids to school, we're doing the extra thing they forgot at home. We're after, uh, we're coming after school to pick them up several times because they're here longer and longer as years go on, different things. But let's not forget that what they're doing during the day, they are amazing faculty, and with their personal and different talents, make this school something so different from any other school. So I just got really inspired and started walking around, talking to people, 
let's listen to and watch what the students are doing to try to change. So, uh, so other things before we go forward is um, our school is growing and and kind of halfway coming out of COVID. So 300 people attend the theater performance and which is huge and it's just it's, it's like we're alive again and um, we have the band group has some special masks they're also still practicing outdoors which is getting a little bit cold for but the dancers have studios um michelangelo gets uh, artists uh, getting into schools of their choices the photographers and filmmakers arts in every direction so uh, we're proud of our students and i want to support the faculty too in my little presentation here, I'm eventually going to stop talking, don't worry. But practically speaking, I just want to say there are a couple things missing, and it has inspired me to want to support the arts even more. And those things are practical rehearsal spaces, practice rooms, storage spaces, and office spaces for some of our faculty. So this isn't like a, a downer or something to uh, not about anything it's just i realize these are needs and these are needs really which our students are feeling as well so that inspired me to want to bring this out in the open and to say thank you for all you do supporting the students in the arts and um if there's anything you see notice or want to be a part of and further support i'm right here and that that's why i'm here that's our place really that's the american place so I'm going to show Amber. Thanks for coming up with me. <laughs> so these are some different um, um, uh, departments in the school picture, and we can go on to the next. We're going to follow a cycle of inspiration, work, completion, and contemplation as we look at the creative cycle at La Vanne. So let's go to the next slide, which is inspiration. And then I'll have a little something to say about each one. Next slide, please. Inspiration strikes a chord. Inspiration encourages us to appreciate beauty, to answer a call, to discover complex facets of ourselves, to see the world differently. And inspiration mirrors our deeper motivation. When we see the word work, it follows our cycle, inspiration, and we're going to see a lot of very inspired work on campus here. So let's take a look at the next one. Design and STEAM are alive and well at La Vance. Very exciting. Now on this slide, you're just going to see just a tiny little bit, and these are quotes from our band director, um, Dorothea Castan. Love and Collegiate School Music Department is dedicated to ensuring that each generation of students graduate with the skills and knowledge that benefits them as individuals and as citizens in a global environment. In that way, we see how the arts follow the mission statement of the school, as well as the Ivy student profile and the Law Down way. We're participating in music arts to preserve and revive local, national, historical, current, and world cultures. To that end, music is a core element of quality education, and therefore, we are committed to providing each child with an opportunity to create, critique, and analyze, and perform a variety of musical styles. I'm going to jump forward so there's not too much of me and more of them. Adding tribe and music on a society 
additional music and our additional music festival we host on campus, as well as all West collegiate honor ensemble, workshop and music summer program, and private lessons through our conservatory. Uh, we give it helps give the students their trans transcripts and resumes, lots of boosts, and get them into scholarship funds for the schools of their choice. We have much interest for our students to complete an IB diploma in music. However, with the limited equipment, space, and staff and schedule, and again, that writing, just bringing out what I learned, uh, we're unable to achieve this at this time. Nevertheless, the numbers are strong for this to be an option one day, and I'm hoping that can be. So I'm going to go support that. Thanks. Thanks for your patience. Yeah. We'll go to the next. Let's listen a little. Katie Shea would like to bring some new um, things about her chorus here in a couple of weeks when she can. And the kids start um, in the studio with Michelangelo. They start in local uh, lower school. They are with um, Mariah Zanati and in the middle school with Jerry Floyd. Uh, let's go to the next slide. What is this about? Is it, they begin with Miss West in the lower school. And we also have dance, which is booming at So I got um, uh, last night, late at night, I got an, um, an email from uh, Bing Osterman, and she gives us some descriptions of what's happening in the bands at La Vanne. In pre-K, pre-K uh, pre two, three, and decade, we focus on the joy of movement with developmentally appropriate dance fundamentals. And she's got a video, but we didn't have time to add that in. In middle school, grades seven to eight, we are diving into the elements of dance body, space, time, energy, and relationships, and applying these to fundamental concepts in all the styles we learn. In conservatory dance, pre-K-3 through middle school, there's an extension of our daily dance classes at La Vance. There's a deeper focus in this to different areas of dance. Currently, we offer ballet, hip-hop, tap, and creative movement. So if there's more information on dance here, if you want to, if you would like some, you can always contact me, contact Tatiana. So let's go on and look at, we've got our strings and they're practicing in the Glassman Gallery. I think that's partially to keep separated and then that they, uh, they are to keep away from each other, but also the space is an issue. Let's keep going to the next. So one little, another little quote here from, um, one of our arts faculty. The goal of performing arts groups is to provide students the skills needed to make music, dance, and theater meaningful parts of their lives as competent audiences, artists, creators, and informed citizens of the world. So we see some of our performers from years back, where uh, the, as my daughter started here at 20, uh, 2006. And some of our more recent members of the cast of Knights of Broadway, uh, who were on just a couple of weeks ago. So moving to the next slide and the next phase of our cycle of creativity, we come to completion. Continuing. Okay. This is 
uh, about the Atelier, the Michelangelo project, which is a project that's close to my heart because when we came here from Europe, moved from Belgium in 2006, my daughter got into the Michelangelo project the next year. And because it was transformative, really life changing for her, I, I speak about it a lot. But um, when someone asks you to be the arts links uh, chair, I just just draw from your own experience in some ways. And uh, because it changed my daughter's life, and she makes art and lives in Brooklyn, and uh, it kind of changed the world still. Um, I, I just like to bring up that the Michelangelo project is is particularly um, unique to La Verne. Only one of those type of uh, atelier teaching programs in the United States. And um, it, it, it's something to keep our eyes on, it's something to keep our hearts uh, open to, uh, to support, and, and I continue to do that. So um, going on to the next slide, you described a little bit how they work and the way that it was transformative for her was really because she had ideas about art, but she didn't know how to put it in motion and make it come off of her flat paper, uh, her canvas, etc. And she learned through this to uh, work to be able to do that. So going on. Yeah, these are some of the schools students get into. I know at Jimmy um, Holt. What was that? <laughs> Did someone say something? Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was there an utterance? <laughs> I hope I'm not talking too much. Yeah, these are some of the schools um, that some of the um, art students are getting into. Those are the schools of their choice. We know we're not a product-based school. We're a process-based school, but we are about preparing for college and the world beyond. So just a uh, uh, list of some of the schools. Moving right on. Art, the photography, some of the plays that have been done. Uh, phase of the creative cycle, which is contemplation, which mirrors reflection, which is a part of the IBC profile. We'll be hearing from our students. I'm inspired. Uh, I'm an aspect teacher. And what? I'm an aspect teacher. Uh, I like painting. Yeah. I like that. What do you like in the classroom that you do? No, um, I don't have a good Oh, 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 Congratulations on your recent performance in schools as the doctor. Um, yeah, uh, I was a long time before no. I became an actor. Can you all hear or not really? We don't have any more volumes, so if it's, if it's no, just say that you can move it. Okay. 
in order to get this <laughs> This is Skylar Hart, and she's co president of the Thespian Society. And she speaks to how she's been. It's kind of always been a part of my work in terms of um, when I came in seventh grade, and I was talking to how I and what classes I wanted to take. Drama, music, and to become in Pandora, and I was like, that's definitely what I want to do. Um, even now, taking into IT and teaching IT students, so, um, I know that dark always is something that's affecting the life and driving me to different types. And whatever I want to do in life, I know it'll be somehow connected to all of that. And even my brother, he's amazing teacher now, and he's like Pittsburgh, and getting to talk to him at the college team that was in high school. I'm just so excited for whatever comes next. Um, I'm really interested in music and dressing, piercing, and doing something in media entertainment, but also connecting that to how I'm interested in the global engagement and international relations. I just want to somehow use all of the things I've interested in with my passion. There's no things I like most of us like young or black teachers. They really do like to help you, and they don't do it to be strict, stressful, pressure way where you start to feel bad about what you're doing. But they do it in a way where they're constantly uh, encouraging you, and they truly help you get better instead of just staring that back. They give you feedback, and you're able to really like, focus on what you're doing and have fun at the same time. And I think the guys that love that. Singing, playing an instrument, uh, visual arts or dance. What are some of the highlights? What are some of the things? I will send all these slides up. Some of the videos of all these things that I know. Hi, I'm Emma, I'm a senior, and I'm in the seventh grade. I'd like to want to do like, how to use your equipment to create the task, but I've also learned the assessment skills in theater, through the different jobs I've had, like Jerry and Camilla, and I really see myself going forward through there with trying to learn it in whatever college I end up in. Oh, these are some of the office and um, office and rehearsal spaces, so we can sort of see it's a quick visual on the way we sort of need a little bit of uh, they might be needing a little support in the area of storage. Uh, it is uh, it, it, there are also those needs in rehearsal spaces, practice rooms, because you can't can't do it without that time in a practice room and the office spaces. But as you can see from everyone's uh, affect. They are an inspired, incredibly inspired bunch. Never uh, complaint, never uh, dragging your feet. Let's get out there. Let's let's do a Zoom. And let's now invite the public. Let's let's bring them back. Um, just go 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 all the time. So I just I'm a fan, and I'm an even bigger fan now. Um, I think that kind of wraps it up. Other than um, just to say, oh, okay. So uh, thank you for being here today. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, as you can see, she literally immersed herself in her role. And did you do all those videos yourself? Like, you went around and yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. And so good to see the good, the bad, everything, all the programs um, our kids can um, be a part of. My own, my older two kids. Did the Michelangelo program and like Elizabeth said, literally life changing. I mean, we are so lucky to have these teachers here at Lausanne and for our kids to participate in the game. So thank you, Elizabeth, for that presentation. Thank you for the opportunity to follow you too. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Denise at Treadway, who is our sports links chair, um, and she's going to speak about all things sports links and also links for our Thank you. Um, Teresa couldn't be here this morning. Um, she's our link for um, representative and always looking for uh, volunteers to help out uh, in the store, especially during the homeschool games. Feel free to reach out to her. Uh, it's 
kind of fun, and we also get like first dibs on the new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's new stuff always coming in, and it may not last a long time. Yeah. Um, and there's also some online orders, I think, that are bagged up in there, too. If you put in an order, you may want to check on it. So now I'll pick something up during process. Okay, and Fort Flint, to piggyback off of the middle school um, district we had this morning, um, I'm a mean parent, and I made, <laughs> last year, my fifth grader, I made him try basketball. And of course, you know, it was the end of the world, because I was, Guess who's trying to set up for basketball this year? <laughs> so it's a great way to meet that time, you know, to, to push your children into what, I mean, you know what they would like, but to let them try things. So anyway, we've got a lot of awesome uh, things to celebrate this morning. Uh, Lincoln Hayes is headed to Cross Country State. Um, yeah. um, we celebrated seniors um, Friday night at the football game. Uh, I think it was all the fall sports. Um, athletes. Um, and then cheer. They uh, won, they were district champs this past weekend. Um, they won, I'm sorry, they won regional. And is there a big one? Okay. <laughs> they're going to state. Look at them. <laughs> um, but they're going to state and they've got a bid at national. Um, what is really big about this uh, squad, they uh, got the highest score in Los Angeles history at regional. Their team started with six, I mean, for, with seven, and now there's 18 on the team. Um, and this is what I would like to say about Los Angeles. Um, there's a lot of young athletic programs here. Um, you know, it hasn't been long. I mean, these aren't very established programs, but um, we're fortunate that we have the admin that has like kind of put us on a fast track to allow us to compete with everyone else in the city. And I'm really proud of that. And it's really a big thing for not just the coaches, but these kids that are part of these programs who, you know, are, are learning as they go too. So anyway, that's it. Um, I know basketball up and running and that is a lot of new um, students are this year. My, my daughter is on a cheer team for the junior. They were crying. I mean, they got the highest score ever that Los Angeles ever had. And they got first place. They were literally crying. All just all of them jumping and crying. So we so, so proud of all of our sports. Thank you so much, Jenny. And um, I football. Yeah, after a two-year hiatus going to be in person. So our committees are getting together now. I have sign-up sheets in the back for here and we will pass around a survey link for everybody who is online and that will go up for our social media and for our emails as well. So everyone can sign up. It doesn't matter if you are an introvert, extrovert, if you want to go all in or if you literally want to run one errand. All we need is your help. Like, if, you, if all we want to do is sit at your desk and send emails, I've got a job for you. If you don't want to speak to anybody, all you got to do is get your car and pick up things that have already been arranged and drop them back off school. Yeah. So, we need all the help we can get. The committees are we've got acquisitions, which is a really fun committee. And again, you don't need to be an extrovert to talk to people. There are multinational corporations that have budgets for this, and all you do is send an email and they say, okay, send you a gift. That's it. There is a big court, which is going to be super fun. Um, the theme we have narrowed it down, and we will be selected. The committee will be selected to speak in the next couple of weeks, and that will be announced in early spring. So we will be keeping that under wraps until everyone gets there. Um, there is the PR and communications team. You will be doing ticket sales. You will be doing flyers. There is. I'm just going to bring it up. That like five things in the back. 
Oh, the entertainment and food uh -huh. and beverage. Yeah. So of course there will also be a team that will have to taste test the menu and have it match to the theme and everything. So it will be at the FedEx Event Center at Shelby Farms on February 26th. Again, sign up sheet is in the back and I will be sending it around. And even if you don't know if you want to take part in auction or not, I will be having in about two weeks an informational brunch slash mimosa and coffee morning at my house. <laughs> so please come, like I like it or not. If you don't, have a drink and leave. And if you do, <laughs> come and join our fun team. All right, thank you. Awesome. So excited. Um, I did entertainment chair for a couple of years and all I did was get parents to come with me to bars and clubs and <laughs> we checked out DJs and it was so much fun. Oh, I remember that was a good time, right? Yes. Um, so thank you so much. It'll be good. Yeah, you guys get involved in auction, working parents, dads, e moms, everybody, just get involved. It's like a super fun event. And she's just, I know you're gonna do an amazing job, so so excited. Okay, next up we have Amber, who is our parent relations person and she knows everything. She's going to tell you about the launch opportunity and what's coming up next for love. And I just want to say thank you to everyone again, to everybody who's here, to everyone who's watching. Um, Fall Carnival was so much fun. It was my first like big event and it just was amazing. Um, and it makes me even more excited about, about the events that we have coming up. So, um, of course, we're not doing Grandparent Day on campus because we didn't feel it safe to bring grandparents. We do have some fun stuff that we're sending out. So just make sure that you're updating your grandparent information. And if anybody asks you about it, say, up and down here across. And they don't know how you can send them to me. Um, and I'll try to explain it. Um, holiday decorating, fun to talk a little bit about that. We're going to organize on Saturday the 13th. And then we're going to go just cover the campus in glitter and sparkles. And it's going to be beautiful <laughs> on November 19th. Um, spaghetti dinner is January 25th. Um, again, kind of like with auction, there are all kinds of things. If you're like, oh, I don't really like talking to people, that's okay. We have non-talking to people roles. <laughs> so we would love for you to get involved um, with things like spaghetti dinner, the auction, which is going to be amazing. Uh, I've been at the space a couple times. If you've never been to the event center at Shelby Farms, you are in for a treat. It's going to be beautiful. Um, we have some faculty and staff appreciation stuff coming up in the spring. Um, we have we kind of do that those things all year, but we'll have some things that we will absolutely be asking for volunteers for. Um, so kind of in the works. And I want to just mention book fair really quickly to everyone. So book fair this year is going to be a little bit different because um, again we didn't feel like especially the little kids like it was okay to have everybody smushed in a select book fair touching books. And, having the best time of your life, but it didn't seem safe. So we actually partnered up with Novel this year, our local bookstore, um, and we're going to do an online and in-store shopping event. So I sent out some information about it, and I'll send out more. But it's going to be November 29th through December 5th. Basically, this is exactly what they told me. You can use the code online, and they'll ship it to you, they'll ship it to me, they'll ship it to your uncle, they'll ship it to your cousin, they don't care if it is. <laughs> but if you go to the store and you just kind of grunt the word Lausanne, they'll give us like a percentage of the sales for mm -hmm. So it's really, really fun. Um, I'm going to have some flyers for, for kids to take home. It'll be an e news to send it to the school too. But just kind of keep that in mind for all your like shopping needs. Um, I know the holidays are coming up and it's a really cool way to support a local bookstore, but also to help a local bookstore support us. So and then we'll have an on-campus book fair, hopefully in the spring. So we're really going to try to because book fairs for the best time of my entire life, I'm not sure about else. But going to novel is really fun too. So um, we'll have more information. If you would like to help with book fair, um, again, just sign up to volunteer. And there are some jobs now, like flyers. And then there'll be a lot of stuff in the spring too that'll be really fun. So does anybody have any questions about events coming up? Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, those of you who are in person here for the first time and our virtual parents, wherever you are virtually, thank you for being here. Um, I 
If you haven't already joined us on social media, Dina, um, our social media chair does an amazing job of like, you know, if you don't want to email us, it's easy to just send a message on social media. And she does some really fun like surveys and fun stuff for Love Ant. Um, so definitely join us, join your Facebook appraise page. Um, and before you leave, please like, in all the years I've been at, here at Love Ant, like, I do not want a single person who comes to a meeting to not say one word to anyone in this place. So please, before you leave, one minute, introduce yourself to someone that you have not met before, that you do not know, and um, have a wonderful day. And we'll see you next time. Uh, tomorrow, it's December 7th. December 7th. Awesome.